So this video will discuss number three from the 2023 AP Stats free response set. This is the probability question from 2023. So this particular probability question involves bath fizzies. So they're tablets that dissolve and create bubbles when added to bath water. In order to increase sales, the bath fizzy company is going to have a line of fizzies that have a cash prize in each one. So the random variable X is going to be the dollar value of the cash prize in a fizzy. The probability distribution for the random variable X is shown in the table. So the probability of getting a $1 prize is not explicitly specified. Probability of getting a $5 cash prize, 0.2, $10, 20, 50, and 100 uh, throughout the rest of that table. So based on the probability distribution of X, answer the following, show your work. I, I would honestly say that this particular problem is not that difficult. And if you would miss points on a problem like this, I guarantee it would be because of a lack of showing your work. In general, the probability question on the stats test, you want to make sure you're showing your calculations, uh, especially when the calculations aren't that involved. Like, I think as we discuss this, you're going to realize that these calculations are pretty straightforward. Not showing your work is, is definitely going to be a pretty big detriment to being able to earn a, a good score within that FRQ. So this first part of Part A says calculate the proportion of bath fizzies that contain $1. They didn't give that to us. Uh, what we would hopefully realize is that all of the probabilities across this bottom row are going to have to sum to 1. Right? One of these things has to happen. So adding all of those probabilities together has to give us one, meaning if I start with one and I subtract off the total of all of these others, that's going to give me the probability of getting that $1 cash prize. And if you do that, you end up with 0.68. Another thing that you're going to want to make sure you do in probability questions. Now, this is worded a little bit differently. It doesn't say probability. It says proportion. A proportion is a fraction in general. We wouldn't want to necessarily respond to this as, as 68%, especially if it says probability. By definition, in AP stats, a probability is a number between zero and one. Uh, you may need to make sure you don't respond as a percentage. Now, can you interpret this as a percentage? Sure, but make sure you're looking at the specifics of the wording and acting accordingly with how you respond. Part two here, calculate the proportion of bath fizzies that contain at least $10. Well, that would just be the sum of 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, and 0 0.01. Uh, we don't have to subtract anything off. There's not a potential for one bath fizzy to contain both a $10 prize and a $20 prize. Right? You have to watch out for or probabilities in situations like that. In this case, there's no potential for overlap. These are mutually exclusive events, and therefore we're just going to add up the individual probabilities, and there's another pretty straightforward calculation. Second part of this, based on the information that we are provided with at the onset of the problem, calculate the probability that a randomly selected bath fizzy contains $100, given that it contains at least $10. Show your work. So you hopefully see that word in your probability question. You realize it's a conditional probability situation. So what's the probability that we have $100 in our fizzy given that we already know that it's greater than or equal to $10. Well, we computed the probability that it was going to be greater than or equal to $10 back in part B. That was 0.12. The probability that we actually have $100 in that fizzy is 0.01. So 0.01 divided by 0.12 is going to end up giving you an answer of 0.083. Uh, there is a formula from the formula sheet for conditional probability. I, I don't necessarily think it made a ton of sense to use it here. Uh, could have maybe thrown you off track a little bit. Uh, hopefully the way that we've discussed this and the work that you see on my screen is going to allow you to recognize how to do something like this should you encounter it. But if you found the probability of 100 intersect 10 in the numerator, that's still this 0.01. So the probability that we have at least 10 is that answer from the first part, so that would be the conditional portion, given that this condition is already satisfied. Uh, the probability of 100 and greater than or equal to 10 is actually just the probability of 100. Now, that should hopefully make decent sense. Next part, based on the probability distribution, calculate and interpret the expected value of the distribution of the cash prize in the bath fizzies. Show your work. 
So the way that you're going to find the expected value given a probability distribution table is you're going to take the probability of an outcome times the numerical value of that outcome, and you're going to add that to each of the other corresponding calculations. So the probability of $5 is 0.2 times the amount of that cash prize. Probability of $10 is 0.05 times the probability of that cash prize. We're adding those all up. What you end up with when you do that is $4.68. Perform all tasks. C students tend to overlook tasks like that, right? They, they do the math, right? Usually in math, we've, we've got the calculation to do. That's already done. A lot of stats is, is writing, and you should recognize that at this point. Uh, interpret. So what is the interpretation of that? So the interpretation of an expected value is that if these, if whatever the event was, if it was repeated over and over and over and over again, many, many, many times. And notice how that's how I've started my interpretation. If many bath fizzies containing cash prizes are purchased, the average amount of the cash prize for each of the bath fizzies will be $4.68. So we buy 10,000 of these bath fizzies and we figure out what the cash prize is in each of the 10,000, uh, we're going to end up having an average of approximately $4.68 per bath fizzy. You could have Done this a little differently. You could have said you could have said the expected value of the prize per bath fizzy is four dollars and sixty eight cents. So the phrasing can be changed a little bit, but definitely when you're interpreting an expected value, making sure that you're showing the greater that you recognize that it's a long run situation is something that can't be overlooked. So uh, the beginning of my interpretation here is definitely something you're going to have to account for. There's a little bit of flexibility in what you say after you recognize you show the greater that you recognize that we're in a long run behavior situation and then the last part of this so the company wants to start selling the bath fizzies in france they use euros in france rather than dollars they tell us that one dollar is 0.89 euros using the expected value from part c calculate the expected value in euros of the distribution of the cash prize in each bath fizzy show your work. So I defined a new random variable just so I could apply some notation to this. So I'm just going capital Y is going to be the euro value of a cash prize in a bath fizzy. What's the expected value of Y? Well, the way that we go from X to Y is we multiply X, the dollar amount, by 0.89 in order to perform that conversion. Whenever you have an expected value for one random variable and you're transforming it through the operation of multiplication, all you're going to do is you're going to multiply that original expected value. So that answer from part C, what was it, $4.68? Multiply that by 0.89 and you get the euro value of a cash prize, the expected value in euros of a cash prize in the bath physics.